Hello. My name is Marcy, and I am my patient's doctor. That should probably be the end of this. In fact, I gave a talk at Pfizer um, just a couple months ago, and they had, you know, the usual functionaries up there talking about the medical home. Have you seen that stuff about the medical home? And, uh, you know, the lists go on and on and on and on and on. And I got up there and I said, hello, I am the medical home. Mm -hmm. The place our patients go where they know where their refrigerator is. My <laughs> patients feel at home in my office. My patients know who my staff is. My staff knows who they are. They do have my cell phone. They text me. I tell them they can even send a carrier pigeon. No one's tried that yet, but they have stopped by my house. No big deal. It really is no big deal because they're my friends, and for those of you who are Jewish, I call it my bishbucha, and I think you'll understand that. We really are one happy family, and it, and it works great. In fact, patients drive business to other patients because they're, we're all in this game together, right? A better day? You know, I... Um, Years and years and years ago, I, I, I went to Wellesley also. Hillary was at Wellesley. In fact, I'll tell you a little um, anecdote. I went back to Wellesley to meet with my economics professor. And I asked him, you know, give me the real story. Give me the real story. And he said, the real story is, and I am quoting, history has never been more beautifully rewritten. <laughs> Hillary was bright, but... Wellesley women are bright. And when I was there, I had the privilege of, I majored in economics, and that's a whole story in and of itself, but I actually wrote a lot of the literature that kind of establishes what we're doing today. The fact is, is that the system is indeed broken. And we are the answer to not just the uninsured, but we're the answer to the growing costs in health care. And I'll get to that during my practice. Let me tell you a little bit about, uh, during this talk, rather, let me tell you a little bit about SIMPD. That's the name of our organization until February 20th. That represents the Society for Innovative Medical Practice Design. I wasn't on their board when they came up with that name. Um, which nobody can remember or spell or understand, but we have made it quite easy. We will be, as of February 20th, the American Academy of Private Physicians. And our underscore is personalized value-based health care. Says it all. We work for our patients. We don't care what model you use. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the models and what I do in my practice. But the point is, is that we really do sell ourselves, and we really do work directly with our patients. So these models may or may not work for you specifically, but you can kind of take from them a, a few of the tips and build a practice that's about you because the patients want to talk to you, and you want to talk to them. It is relationships, isn't it? That is the value of health care here in the United States. It's the relationship. Everything is about the relationship. And if you don't have the time to spend with your patients and build that relationship, you cannot possibly sell them, if you will, what they need. I sell my patients, hopefully, a better day, a more productive day. I think that that is the opportunity that America provides. <clears throat> the problem, and this is repeating a lot of what was said today so beautifully, medical care costs are getting too high, and we all know where those costs are. They're in the middlemen. They're not coming to you, and some of them are not coming to the hospital, but there's a lot of administrative stuff involved. The satisfaction with medical care is getting low on both ends. Insurance premiums are climbing. The number of uninsured is increasing. Doctors and patients are absolutely disempowered in this system. Insurers are too busy managing care to pay the bills, and Congress thinks they have a medical degree. Or they wish they had a medical degree. My decision to do this was I needed to be a doctor. I was tired of the paperwork. I wanted to be a doctor, and I needed to feed my family. I needed to be able to take care of my patients, and I wanted to feel like a professional again. I, I, I went to a lot of school. You guys have done a lot of schoolwork. Um, we are professionals, and we need to take our profession back. In fact, um, Catherine was talking about the AMA. I am in all of those organizations. I am their worst enemy. 
Um, I am one of six people who are the doctors for, who established a group called the Doctors for Patients Freedom, and we founded the, the AMA Take Back the Profession group. Um, I'll be happy to get you on our listserv if you'd like, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about how we made Massachusetts happen because we were behind a lot of the Massachusetts experience. So um, don't think that you can't change the world. You can change the world. And by the way, you do that every day when you're helping a patient. You're changing it one patient at a time. I have a retainer practice because that worked for me. It's simple, it's direct, and it's done. My patients pay for my services in an, econ in an economic marketplace. The market drives that value-based decision. My practice is in Los Alamitos, California, which is right near Long Beach. I'm not rich, my patients aren't rich. Uh, I don't live in Newport Beach. I don't live in Beverly Hills. I charge $1,800 a year for my patients, and that's it. Um, and in addition to that, um, I'll talk to you in a little bit about the, uh, the model that I have as an adjunct, and that is I give scholarships to my patients. So any patient who can't afford me, who was my patient, is my patient still if they wanted to stay in the practice. They are given my time and absolutely every bit of my dedication in exchange for volunteering in the community. They volunteer. They maintain their dignity. I give them care. It's great. It solves the whole uninsured problem. We can talk about that. We're starting a foundation at the AAPP that will, uh, uh, that will expand this type of opportunity across the nation. But again, it's that trade thing that you were talking about, Dr. Watson. There's just, you know, cash means a lot of things. It's, it's just the means of exchange in this country, and it happens to be green and it's dollar bills. But you can certainly buy a loaf of bread. Um, you can have your yard work done, and patients can exchange things. There's all kinds of things that can happen in a cash-based marketplace. How to. Um, yearly payments across the country are anywhere from what I charge of about $1,800 or $1,500 to as much as $10,000. And clearly, this is market driven. If I charge $10,000 a year, I'd be pretty lonely because that's not what my market is. My patients go to work every day like I do. They have kids, and this is just the decision they made. This has to be part of the plate of expenses. And so you have to work with your marketplace. If you're in the middle of Peoria, Illinois, it is different than being in the center of Beverly Hills. Now, most of us who are already in practice don't move, although you certainly could move to Beverly Hills if you wanted to start your practice. There are opportunities to do that. I already had relationships with my patients. I was not willing to do that, so I wanted to stay right where I was. My patients pay me monthly, they pay me quarterly, they pay me biannually, and again, cash, credit card, all that kind of good stuff. Um, some people who do this kind of practice accept insurance, I do not. Um, now, in California, we have some interesting laws, and some people would say I was breaking the law and that because I don't take insurance, I am an insurer. I will tell you that that is not true, and I, and I have legal backing for that. On the other hand, I look good in orange, so if they want to arrest me, that's fine too. Um, but I think it's double dipping. Now, I've worked, uh, we're working with insurance companies, specifically Blue Cross, to build that catastrophic wraparound so that patients don't have to pay twice for our services. I think that's a very important part of this model. And I'm going to tell you actually what's in the current legislation, as bad as it is. We actually have a piece in the current legislation that allows us to do that. I, the, the number of patients in practices are between 300 and 600. I have about 400 patients in my practice. I can tell you, I work very hard. The work is different. You know, I'm online at night finding interesting opportunities for my patients. I'm reading literature. I'm writing newsletters and learning myself, you know, what's new in medicine. I'm talking to colleagues about better opportunities for my patients. I'm on the phone from probably 6 o'clock at night to 10 o'clock at night negotiating all kinds of opportunities for my patients. That's how I practice medicine. In the olden days, I was in the office doing paperwork. 
I wasn't dealing with patients. But now I'm on the phone, hey, Gladys, how you doing? How's the this? How's the knee? Ba, ba, ba. Calling Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, I've got a patient. I need some help. Would you be willing to see him? Here's the story. What can I do to prepare the patient to come to see you? All those kinds of things are what I do to make this transaction work better to add value. And quite frankly, it's very, 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 not only enlightening, but it's, it, it feels good. There's nothing better at night. I, tell me, is the thank you the best thing you ever get in your, every day? I mean, isn't, if they paid the electric bills, wouldn't that, I mean, right? When, when Mrs. Smith tells you thank you that you helped her mother and you're, she's so glad her mother's alive, there's just nothing more valuable. That's that MasterCard priceless thing. Um, and it is absolutely priceless. It's just that you can't articulate that in five minutes when the doctors who are colleagues don't have time to even sit down in a chair. As I say, I, I don't know how a person can go through the medicine list or get through how high, how, how are you, in that five minutes, I can't get my butt out of the chair in that time and move on. So my patients get whatever they need, whenever they need it. I'm online. I've been online today in the back, sitting right next to Jane, taking care of patients, articulating things for them, learning that they did well or not well, answering questions. It, it's, it's really a wonderful way to practice. 